Good morning, go ahead and we're going to open up in prayer and then we're going to get started with our Bible study. Or should I say we're going to continue on with our Bible study. Amen. And remember the Bible study for the month is why is it important to go to church? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So I'm glad to see all y'all smiling faces yes. this evening. And for you all that's online, hey, thank you for making it to another service. Uh, we want you to know that we love you and we hope one day you'll be able to make it out. Amen. Pray with me. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this blessed and wonderful and glorious day, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, Father God, your peace, your joy, and the way you just take care of us, Lord. Lord, for this Bible study, Lord, as we uh, break bread together here, Father God, in this word, Lord, we are thanking you in advance, Father God, that everyone will get a uh, great understanding of your word this evening, Father. And Father God, the questions that will be asked will be good questions, Father God, and will help people not just here to get an understanding, but those who are online to get an understanding. Thank you, Lord, that your word will go out and won't return void, Lord, but it will accomplish everything that you've called it to, Father. Yes, Father, I decrease as you increase. You give me what to say in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus name. And Jesus. for those who are on their way out, Lord, give them traveling grace, Father God, that they may make it here safely. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. So the study we've been talking about is why is it important to go to church? And remember, we, 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 we ended up last week on a hot mic. I mean, it was hot, hot, hot. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, man, it was hot, hot, hot. We talked about what's the purpose of the church. And when we say church, we're not talking about the individual. We're talking about the sanctuary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen? What is the purpose of it? Because there is a purpose for the sanctuary. Well, let people fool you and say, well, you know, well, we, we the church, so I don't need to go to no church. I don't need to go to no building. Yeah, that's not that's not biblically correct. Amen. All right, that's not biblically correct. And so we answer some questions, and um, what is the purpose of the church? And we talk about the church is a hospital for those who may be spiritually and physically ill. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about how the church is a classroom for learning to those who simply don't understand the word of God to its simplest form. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, this is a hospital and this is a school. Amen. 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 And we, we, we had talked about um, Luke, I think we were reading in Luke 2, 46 to 47, and it was when Jesus was asking questions in the church. And in fact, we're going to go back there, and we're going to move from there. Uh, Elder Locke actually went to the very next verse, the very next scripture that I was going to go to anyway. So I see that he has been doing this teaching too. So I'll just thank God for him. <laughs> That's how the Holy Ghost work, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So Luke 2, 46, and I think we were reading the New Living Translation, right? Amen. Excuse me for one second while I go turn these fans on. Yes, I want to. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, we were talking about, and we were ending with this, because we were talking about how church, we just happened to get into that place about how the sanctuary is a classroom, amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, verse 46, and I'm reading the New Living Translation. If you have it, I would ask that you would uh, turn it to your, turn your New Living Translation to Luke 2 and 46. And it says this, As three days later, they finally discovered him. Now, this is Jesus' parents. They, you know, they, uh, after they got finished, uh, let's go back up. Okay, because it was the Passover festival. So after they got finished with the, doing the things they needed to do for the Passover festival, uh, they decided to start walking. They were all headed back to their 
homes. And when they were on their way back, Jesus uh, was missing, and they didn't notice until they were a whole day out. You know, the day's journey in the Bible, a lot of people don't know, as they walk, a day's journey is 20 miles. And so they they, they look back, and they're like, okay, well, well where, is, where is our son? And it's not that they were bad parents. It's just that the parents thought that, hey, we got family members and friends that are amongst us as we we're taking this journey, and they figured Jesus was with one of them, one of the family. You know, hey, but he's still with family. He's good. But then they found out he wasn't with family, and so they had to turn around and go back. And when they got back there, and it took three days later, right? Verse 46. Three days later, they finally discovered him. He was in the temple sitting among the religious teachers discussing, and we were talking about this last week, deep questions with him. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. All right? So he was in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Discussing deep questions with the religious teachers at that time, the religious leaders at that time. Amen? And this is where, again, as we were talking about last week, the church is where you should be able to get your deep questions answered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to go to the streets and get our questions answered because the people in the church are afraid to talk about money. These are some of the things people hate talking about in the church. Oh, we don't want to talk about no money. They don't want to talk about sex. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, it's, it's just, it's so many different things that they don't like talking about in the church. And, and the things they don't like talking about are the things that we need to address. Amen. 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 The Bible addresses these things also. We need to address these things because if we don't address them in the church, then they're going to get addressed. Our children are going to get addressed with this stuff out in the streets. Amen. Yep. Amen. I had no problem sitting my boys at the table, me and my wife, when my boys were growing up, and explaining to them and talking to them about sex. And <laughs> the youngest one, I thought he was going to throw his guts up, man, when we, <laughs> poor guy. But... Nevertheless, they turned out well. They did not scar them one bit. Amen. 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 And these are the things that not only do parents need to talk to with their children, but this is stuff that needs to be talked about in the church. We talked about also how, you know, some of the stuff we talked about in that area was, remember, we talked about how the men of integrity, we talked about how, hey, you, you need to plead your wife because in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's talking about you have to give one another due benevolence. And when you look at due benevolence and you break that down in the Greek, you'll find out it's talking about uh, a sex. It's talking about sex. And you are supposed to please one another. But people don't know this. And then if you go to the book of uh, the Songs of Solomon, or Songs of Songs or something like this, if you go to that, it, whew, man, I tell you what. <laughs> That book is so hot, it will make you blush. You get to read through there, and, 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 and you see Solomon talking about, uh, you know, talking about his garden, and you know, and going up to the from the garden up to the mountains. The I'm like, oh, all right, this dude here. But yeah, we gave a study in here. We were talking about that. If y'all remember, was whoo. Sweat would just beating off my head, boy. Because this is, look, this is the place where that stuff needs to be talked about. Amen? Amen. We, we don't have to, we, we shouldn't have to learn it. We shouldn't have to learn it because we're researching on the internet. Mm -hmm. Amen? Go ahead, Elder. Amen. Uh, it's awesome that we're back here talking about this part because last week when we was at Ephesians 4 and 11, it's People forget about the last part of 11. Well, we didn't go there yet. Mm -hmm, we sure didn't. Uh, we, no, you, you were supposed to. We, go we were about to go there, though. Oh, I, I think I had to mention it then. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the other ones I missed in that That's fine. Go ahead. You, you're talking about it. I guess we don't have to go there. Can I ask everyone to go to Ephesians 4 11? Oh, amen. 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 <laughs> but, uh. Amen. Ephesians 4 11. Are we talking New Living Translation, sir? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, can I read it down through 15 before you go? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. <laughs> Amen. When you get there. Amen. Amen. 
And we talked about the church being a school, Amen. a place where you should learn about uh, your benefits in life, your, about, about the things that God has done for you, about his grace and what grace has for you. We know that grace makes and faith does what? Takes. takes. But faith can't take what you don't know grace makes. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen? Amen. 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 It says this, uh, New Living Translation, he is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. church. Build up the church, okay? It's not talking about just your body. It's talking about the church, amen? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you have, we're building up your body, too. We're building up your spirit, but it's talking about the church, the body of Christ, the assembly, amen? amen. Forsake not the assembly of your, see Hebrews 10, 25? Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about, the assembly, amen? Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. Until we come to such a unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full-grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or because someone has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like the truth. Mm -hmm. Instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, what were you going to say, Elder Law? Amen. Um, the last part we're talking about the teacher is people forget about that part of that last part of that where it says teacher and what it is people start chasing and wanting those titles not realizing that the important part of the titles is teacher where you being effective in all these other areas you have to know how to teach teach the word of God the word says rightly divide the word of truth you have you have to um, be Diligent in your study of the word. Don't think that you know it all and that you and that you obtained it all. When Paul is telling you, he said, I have not yet obtained. And there's always more that we can learn mm -hmm. as long as we still have breath about the word of God and about our life walking with Christ and, and more that we can learn about Christ. But people always they want to chase these titles, but they don't want to chase the teacher part. <laughs> they, they want to chase titles and want titles and want titles, but they and then, like you said, some of them, they won't speak over everybody's head where they can't understand what they're saying. And the Bible says, and all you're getting, get an understanding. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to teach. That's what I love about how God has equipped you to where you are great at that. You break it down to the simplest form to where the children can understand the word of God. To where nobody is left like, uh, oh, what, what was he saying? What, what were those words? What, what did that mean? You break everything down. And that's what... The man or woman that's up there giving the word, that's the professor at that time, the teacher, is supposed to break everything down so everybody does what the word says, and all you're getting, get and understand it. You have to understand it to apply it. Amen. 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 And, uh, you know, the, the, that's a gift that God gives us, and I thank God for that gift. I, don't, I do not take it lightly. I thank God for the gift he give, he's given me, and I tell people I have the mind of a child. Because they, they, I look at it this way. If I can understand it, then I'll be able to help others to understand it. Because these questions, I ask questions. I ask myself questions. I always say my wife is the question queen, right? And she asks a lot of questions, so I have to be prepared. <laughs> but I, I do. I ask myself. When I'm doing studies, in the middle of the study, I ask questions. I ask myself questions, and it causes me to have to actually go to the Hebrew or the Greek, or it causes me to, to go to other scriptures that point to this one, because I'm asking questions as I go through. And the questions that I ask, and I'm praying that, okay, well, these questions, hopefully, these are the questions that people are already, you know, going to ask at the church, because um, I, I have the answers for them, because God you show me. Amen. 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 Teacher is very important because, uh, and, you know, that's why Paul said that uh, he, des he didn't desire that many people be teachers. You know why? Because everybody can't teach. Mm -hmm. Just because a person can get up here and, and hoop 
and holler, that don't mean that they can teach. Amen. You got a lot of people in a lot of churches today, all they do is hoop, holler, talk at the people, talk over the people, and the people of the church, they listen to the choir, they leave the church and say, it was a good program, man, it was a good service today, and the choir did this, and they sung these songs, and what did the pastor talk about? I don't know, but it sure was a good service. <laughs> You know why? Because he's not teaching the word. And, and also when we teach, you know, we have to look at our demeanor. I, mean, you, I, can't, I can't teach to you and I'm talking at you and judging you and condemning you. Amen. Nobody wants to receive that. Amen. So true. God does not teach to us by uh, putting us down. The way he teaches to us in his scriptures is by him encouraging us and lifting us up. Amen? You know, the Bible uses this word quicken, and that means make alive. Amen. And so Amen. notice when we get together in the assembling of ourselves, as the scriptures talk about, this is why we got to have a church. Amen? Amen. Amen. That then when we get together, we get to speaking about, you know, the word of God, and then here, Elder raises his hand. You know, the Holy Ghost is going boom, 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 boom. The Holy Ghost is, is, is explaining these scriptures to us and teaching us, and not just by my mouth, but by your own mouth. Amen. 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 And that's why we encourage everybody to get involved, because we know the Lord is talking to you. Amen. 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 Um, Oh, I didn't oh, see it. You're going to have to be like me. You're going to have to put my hand on my back. I have to go way up there before I lay up here. She don't see me. So, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Elder. Hey, Amen. You said something that, that, that sparked when you were saying that when you were preparing to give your study and, and you asked yourself the questions, it's, it's funny because I do the same thing. I, I ask myself certain questions and I love how God does because those certain questions that I ask myself when I'm giving it, somebody else asks it the same way like you're saying. And so it's like, I thank God because he's already preparing me mm -hmm. for the answer that someone's going to need for that same exact question. And and I love how he does he, because he always says he equips you. He equips those and he does. And he always brings it back to your remembrance at that very hour. You know how the word tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, rightly divide the word of truth? Mm -hmm. What that means when we break it down in English terms is uh, correctly explaining the word of truth. Amen. Rightly divide means correctly explain. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem that we have in, in, in the body of Christ today is we have many people, again, who can preach but they can't teach. And they're not rightly uh, explaining the word of truth. God wants us to get an understanding of the word. This is why Paul said in Corinthians that, hey, you know, when, when the people uh, was talking about tongues and Paul was explaining, I think it was in chapter 14, but he was explaining about the gifts and he was talking about tongues, people speaking in tongues. He said, I would rather you speak five words that the people can understand than to be speaking you know, a, a lot of words where nobody can understand. Why? Because if I can speak five words that you understand, then you're going to get edified from that. But if I speak a bunch of words, a bunch of garble that you don't understand, lost. How on earth is that going to edify the church? No way. Go ahead, your evangelist. Forgive me. I didn't raise it up again, but this is so good. <laughs> so, because as you were speaking and you said, you know, to speak above is what you were saying, to speak above anyone, to speak when they don't understand it. That is why so many leave the church, because they come in the church to try to fix the situation that they feel like they're going through in their lives. And they said, okay, I know that I got to go to God and I'm going to God, so I'm going to go to church. They don't. You know, most people don't connect with just talking to God. They come so that they can come to church to hear the word of God. But then when the preacher or the gets up and they're just speaking at them or above their head and they're not getting an understanding, then therefore they go and they turn to the world to get the answer. 
which is why this world is so corrupt now, because as you were saying earlier was, yes, we need to talk about sex in church. We need to talk about money in church. We need to talk about racism in church so that the world can be a better place. And it is not going to change until everyone come in the church to get a true understanding of the way that God meant for us to live here on this earth, then we will be better people. Amen. You know, we also things like business owners. We need this is the type of stuff we need to talk about in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, we run around here. We know God is in 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 um, into uh, what we call ownership. You know, God doesn't rent anything; He owns it. Amen. And in the same way, God wants us to own the business. Mm -hmm. He don't want us to just work here. He wants us to, to own it. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Amen. Amen. This is really awesome. You know. Um, I'm gathering some things here that's been just said, and the first thing that I heard when I came in was uh, Elder Locke was talking about how, you know, uh, people talking, pastors and, and ministers talking over the people's head and, you know, thinking that they're more than someone else because they know something that they think no one else knows. But first of all, the word is for everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. The word is for everybody that wants to know it, and it's been given to us freely. And, and it's, it's, it's put in a, in a context where we can understand it because it references itself. The Bible references itself. It, by two or three witnesses, let every word be established. But we still have to be in place in order to understand that even, to be taught. But when someone's preaching over your head, first of all, they're looking for recognition. They're looking for someone to recognize them as being somebody. It's almost as if they don't have their own identity, so they're striving. That's why they got so many titles. That's why they want somebody to call them the deacon, doctor, elder, or whoever. You know, so, but it don't take all of that. Just call me brother. Amen. You know, I know who I am. First of all, God knows who he is, so he ain't striving for no recognition. He wants us to reverence him in the way he's supposed to be reverenced, not in a, a way of being scared of him, but reverencing who he is because he know who he is already. He wants us to know who we are in him. Amen. Amen. And, and then on top of all of that, he tells us in the word that no one should think more highly of themselves than they ought because he created all of us equal, number one. And if we can't encourage each other and, and teach each other to be on the same level, then we're doing each other a great injustice. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And that's the thing about God. When you say the same level, God teaches us. When he gives us something, it's for all his children. Amen. Amen. It's not Amen. just for one separate special group. Amen. Yeah, in the Old Testament, when it, when, when, when there was uh, the Is Israelites and Gentiles, yes, everything went to the Israelites first. And then it came to the Gentiles. Well, they ain't like that anymore. Because Jesus, when Jesus did what he did, we were adopted. That was it. That was it. Amen. That was so it. we are all God's children. And whatever God puts out there is for all of us. And all of us can also receive the exact same benefits. So Amen. Go ahead and do it quick. Amen. Amen. Be good, man. And um, I, I see you a lot. Give me a moment here. It says, and, we were, and I'm back in Ephesians 4. Why do you give the gifts to the church? And who are the gifts? Mm. Uh, he gives to the church was the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastors, and the teachers. Mm -hmm. and, the, and and our responsibility is what? To equip. Amen. 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 To equip God's people mm -hmm. from that which is teaching. Amen. To equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Amen. Until we come into the unity of the faith. And that is the big problem in the body of Christ right now. Unity, because everyone is so divided with different. I mean, it's 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 the body of Christ right now is like a a a, a frat house. Exactly, exactly. It's like a frat house. It's like we got so many different fraternities and sororities in in the frat house. You know, we got the Baptist fraternity, the Methodist fraternity, the Lutheran fraternity. <laughs> The Church of God in Christ fraternity, the Church of Christ fraternity, uh, you know, and, and it just keeps going. It, it keeps going. And and why do we have all this? We have all this because people have taken their opinions. Someone has taken their opinions and say, hey, 
I don't like what you are saying here, or what you are showing me, or what you are teaching me, and I think it means this, even though you're saying it means that. And then they go out and they start their own denomination. Mm -hmm. Now, nowhere did Jesus come to give us the denomination. Did you see Jesus come to give anybody a denomination? No. I, I, I still don't see it in the Bible. Nowhere. My mother told me, well, Baptist is in the Bible. I said, no, ma. No, that wasn't uh, John wasn't a Baptist. That's what he did. He, yeah, he right. baptized. He wasn't John wasn't a Baptist. He baptized. He did. People you know, take it out of context. Again, without the proper teaching, people are going to take it out of context. Mm -hmm. And so you gotta have the proper teaching. And you know, and, and, and it's funny because I laugh because I say, okay, you know, here I am, I'm your son, mom, and I'm teaching you this stuff and you know, but that's just the way it is. Jesus was the son of Mary and Joseph, and you know what? Or Mary and God and Joseph. We gotta put Joseph in there. Because whether you know it or not, Joseph and Mary were related. Yes. All right. So, so Joseph was in the bloodline, whether people know it or not. Yes. Uh, but but um, what else? Thank you. Jesus taught Mary. Jesus taught Mary. Amen. Jesus taught all of us. And we all have to go through Jesus in order to get to the Father. Amen. 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 There it is right here. Amen. <laughs> I lose my train of thoughts sometimes. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. I'm glad you took your son because I lost my train of thought. I had to remember mine too. <laughs> Amen. But it was awesome when you and Elder Potter both was talking about it. It reminded me of a time. Uh, I think I was a deacon at the time. I might want to miss it, but I was preparing to give Bible study, and my uh, my mother-in-law's neighbor. I was talking about how I was going to. Oh, well, I already had the, uh, the 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 study plan and lesson that all the churches are giving for Bible study. Oh, I'm ready no. to. Oh, what? Hold on. Wait. Yeah, I said, Hold on. No, you you keep that. <laughs> that 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 ain't how we do at our church. I said, we give what God says to give. We, we don't go off a, a set thing that uh, somebody tries to tell you that you're supposed to give to the people because then you're being Jonah. Then, then, you're, then you're going and trying to just uh, impress the saved and trying to uh, re, re save the saved and stuff instead of going and, and getting the word out to the lost. Going and trying to save a nation instead of just a boatload and stuff. And, and it's like you was just saying. God's word is for everybody, not for certain to impress certain people or to, or for just one person. Or, no, it's for the whole congregation, the whole church, and stuff for, for the whole body to get an understanding. Because that one word that goes for it could be a whole bunch of different things going on, problems, but that word solves all of it in one setting. Amen. And this is why you can't have what they call a curriculum. Mm -hmm. You took words off of my heart right there. A curriculum because. God knows exactly what the people in this Amen. in this building, Amen, in this assembly mm -hmm. need to hear. Mm -hmm. And what's happening in your assembly may not be the same thing that's happening in this assembly. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God is going to give you something to give your people, you know, to help them to grow. And God is going to give me something to help our people to grow. The thing about it is, it's still going to agree completely with God's word. Amen. 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 It's not going to be something passed down from tradition. Come on. Now, I, I heard him. I seen her him first. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know. I, I probably am not going to finish this study in one month. We know. <laughs> this is a little slide to the left. <laughs> you don't have to. That is us, and I'm so glad that it's going on so many can be educated by the word. And you know, um, you mentioned how um, I remember years ago where this lady, middle aged, you know, she was t trying to put her title this and that and that and that, you know. And um, she said, well, what are you? I said, I'm a Christian. <laughs> just like that, boldly. And then she said, then she just kept, she just kept talking. So I had to put her on like, and a deacon. And she said, what? I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She said, your pastor? Yes, he did. 
Yes, he did. They always try you. Do your pastor know that you're an idiot? <laughs> you know, and people, people do that because they wear that title, they title instead of what God has given him. You know, so many people want to place themselves in a pastor or, you know, in these, you know, I don't know why. You know, and God, it, and it wasn't good to them. Why. And I love the fact that how, um, like you said, uh, uh, where Elder Locke was mentioned, how um, the neighbor was trying to say, okay, this teacher for all the churches, where each, each, each church has something different. You know, how can we be taught on, on uh, Baptist or whatever, and we're not? You know, but God has given to you to give to us, not only to us, but to all of those that's online. So they can apply it and live it and share it. So I love this this teaching that you have given to us so we can apply some more of this food to our soul and, and share it with others. Amen. 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 And don't get me wrong, I've seen it where I can be uh, speaking on the subject and then next week I'll, like, I'll watch Creflo Dollar or something. And then he'd be on the same thing. I said, okay, I see what I see the, what, what direction the Lord God is going in here. You know what I mean? And so it, it, it happens. It happens. But using that curriculum from the the per se the superintendent of the group, that, that doesn't work. That's, that doesn't work because you can be teaching your people need to hear about healing, and here you're teaching on. Uh, I don't know, you're teaching them getting out of debt. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Or it's, you're teaching them speaking in tongues and you know, people need you know, people need healing. And that's what God wants you to give, but you no, know, you're speaking on something that your curriculum told you to speak on instead of what God has told you to speak on. Right. And so we really have to this is why again Paul said, Hey, I I I do not wish that you will all be teachers. Because everybody can't teach, and it's a higher standard for us. Amen. Amen. Because when I was in Ohio, um, we'll the church that I know. Don't talk about it. Talk about it, because I know. was in Cleveland, she was just in Ohio. And the church that I was under, and I didn't know. I didn't know. And we went by what you're talking about. And I remember one of the, uh, the girls' friends, she had got herself in trouble. So when um, she was so anxious to pray, and when she started praying, she was like, God, please, please, please forgive me for getting in trouble. Please don't uh, let my mama whoop me. <laughs> so she was praying, but her mom thought she was joking, but she was serious. But their study they had was with like the book that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. Prison so, passed down. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so that's why we have to, you, you that's, hey. Jesus didn't use one of those. Amen. Paul didn't use one of those. Now Paul was well taught. Paul was taught by by schools that are equivalent to our Harvard and our our uh, Princeton. So we we just have to. It's better that we listen to Revelation. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. Revelation will always help us to give the right education. Amen. 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 Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, uh, when I went to uh, go to visit Angel's fiance, we went to church, and they said, "Oh yeah, we have uh, like Bible study or, or school," or, and I said, "Oh, cool, cool, cool. That's okay with me because you know I go every Sunday. I gotta learn the word." So when we were passing by the hallway, she said, "And yeah, this is the book we use," and I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> open the pages." It's all about Luke and baby Jesus. And, and um, they were talking about, you know, that, you know, this stranger, he just came up and, and took the baby from Mary and, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, can I say something? <laughs> I said, you know why, why she did that? Because spirit recognized spirit. That's why. I tell you, that's why she let that man, that man take that baby. Because spirit recognized spirit. Amen. Just like we know. We know people who are like us. Thank you, Lord. 
you know, and um, I was when when she, she started saying the word, I was like, chink, chink, chink. it was just going over my head. You going too fast for me? You talking too fast? I, I don't understand most of the stuff that you're saying because she was trying to finish that section, and and that's worse. You know, you I didn't have, I, I don't understand what you're saying. I was ashamed to. I was like, mm, let me not start something because I'm gonna start something and it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> I'm mess because I'm gonna I'm gonna debate, debate the word. I really am. I was like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not right. It no, is. That's not right. Well, you can use it to correct. Yeah. The Bible tells us that. Yeah. You know. It's, it's, it's used for that. But it's 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 funny because I sat there and um, you couldn't agree with it. I couldn't agree with most of the stuff she said, but I kind of turned it around to what my understanding of the word, you know, and I said what I understood from the word. I said, my pastor always says, and my, my deep, my elder ministers and all that, they said, spirit, recognize spirit. That, and then it was like, oh yeah, you know, I never thought about that. <laughs> you need to think about that. Him. Yeah, and it was it was cool. After a while, I just didn't stop doing too much of this. <laughs> so, it was great though. <laughs> and then you know, sometimes people teaching it, and that's the thing because it's the curriculum is passed down. So the person up here teaching it don't have an understanding of it, right. and so there's no way I can give you an understanding of it if I don't understand. That's right, man. Okay. Who else right now? Dave and then myself. Oh wait a minute. He's last. I'm last. Okay, Dave. I'll be quick. Like when you said Paul um, had more knowledge in schooling and everything else in Harvard and Arsenal schools, that's back when his name was Saul. And the reason they got his name changed was because he had all the education, spiritual, all the schooling and all that good stuff. But then God came along and he got a revelation then. And then he knew Jesus for sure. And all that stuff changed. He was persecuting the Christians, killing them, everything else. When I don't remember exactly who it was that brought him into the group and they were hiding, you know. And he brought him in there. They didn't want nothing to do with him. They said, what are you going to bring him in there, you know? Cornelius. Cornelius brought him in there. Man. I thought it was crazy, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, the one thing about Paul is Paul had dual citizenship. That's what a lot of people don't know. Now, Paul and Saul actually is the same name. Mm -hmm. Paul, uh, Paul... His father was Roman. His mother was Jew. Right? And so he went with the name Saul at first. But see, Saul had a, you know, somebody said, hey, uh, Saul is on his way to, you know, hey, hey, I heard about that Saul. Hey, he's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, reputation. Yeah. I'm talking about Paul, uh, yeah. Saul, yeah. right? And so, but by his name, but he couldn't, he couldn't keep associating with that name. That's right. That's right. And so, um, you're right. The road to Damascus. Uh, he started using his name Paul. Amen. And so he started using that name, and, and went from there. He just blew up. And that's the whole thing about it. You know, all of us have a gift. Mm -hmm. Paul had a gift before he became the warrior for Christ that he was. He was already a warrior for what he was doing. Right, 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 right. So the gift that he was using in the wrong way, the, the gift he was using to persecute Jesus was the very same gift that he used to uh, uplift. uplift Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? And, and, and to show people about who Jesus was and to get people saved. Amen, amen. So we Paul has some teaching, though. Yes, yes. That's why he wrote 13 of the books, and you know, this we still, we still, you know, the theological argument about one of the books. So it could be 14 <laughs> of the 27 New Testament books. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Um, was yeah. it you? Amen. Yeah, no, 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 no. Amen. You know, I, I want to go back to um, where we was talking about the teaching and. and not having a curriculum in place and not being that being passed down and continuously, you know, uh, teaching people the same old thing over and over. Traditions. Traditions. Amen. You know, 
oftentimes, many times, right here in this body, someone can be teaching in Sunday school and the Bible study will go right along with it. Or the Sunday school will go forth and pastor don't, we don't know what the pastor's going to preach on or whoever is preaching that day is going to preach on, but it'll go right along with it. Because God is trying to tell us something. He's trying to get something to us. And, and if you're sitting in Sunday school, you get a double dose. You get a double dose. You get full. The whole day, you'll be full because you got a double dose. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm loving it because you can't get that in a curriculum. You cannot get that in a curriculum. You will be stuck. You'll be in bondage. You will be just entangled with mess, Amen. trying to follow tradition. Amen. 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 You, you, you have to hear from God. You have to, you know. And this is the whole thing about your calling. You have to know what your lane is. Amen. What you're called. Amen. 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 And you know what you're called to do, then you're able to go forth boldly and do it. Amen. Amen. Right. Um, was it you, Elvin? Uh, Go ahead, sir. Yes, this is good. I'm going back to when you said Paul didn't want everybody to be a teacher. And uh, <laughs> something came back into my mind. I went to Hebrew 5 and 11, where it talks about a call to spiritual growth. Mm. And Paul was saying it's difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull <laughs> and don't seem to listen. <laughs> spiritually dull means that you're not paying attention. Your, your mind ain't on what you're studying. And he said, uh, you have been as a believer so long that you ought to be teaching. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got some that are spiritually dull. Their mind wander. And like he said, they've been uh, uh, a believer of God for so many years and still drinking milk when they ought to be eating meat Amen. and teaching others. Amen. And he said, we ain't got time to go back to the fundamentals, we're going to move forward. For those who do know how to teach, we're going to use them to teach. And those who are a little behind, we're going to let them read and catch up. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's the whole thing um, about about the teachers. You know, about, about teaching. Because once you're taught, you, you know it. You're responsible for putting it out to the others. You're responsible for, you know, when I give it to you, you know, that's it. I'm washing my hands. Because now you're responsible to give it to somebody else. Amen. 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 And he was telling them this because them jokers, they weren't listening. What they were doing is, no, because they, you know what, you know, and it's funny. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, you go back and you'll understand that these guys were still stuck. They were still stuck on, on traditions. Uh, you know, they're still stuck, people were still stuck on doing things of the law. People were still stuck on, you know, they, they were stuck. And people, other people was coming in, bringing different, it wasn't the gospel, but they were bringing different doctrines, and they were telling these guys this, and these guys were quick to jump on it. You know, they were blown by different winds of doctrine. So they were going back and forth. They didn't know what to believe. And, and this is why Paul was like, you guys, you you don't listen, you're dull. You're not, they're not listening, and they weren't. Because they, they had too much mess cluttered up in here mm -hmm. because of tradition. You can't hold on. This is why the Bible says you can't put new wine in old wine's hands. Amen. 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 Because Amen. if you do that, what's going to happen is the old wine's hand is going to burst, and nobody is going to get the benefits of it. All right? It's, it's, it's no good to anyone. That's it. That's it. And so this is why people have to, look, you have to get rid of what you thought you knew and listen to what God is trying to give you now. Mm -hmm. You know, when my phone or my computer is doing a, uh, a an update, my phone or the computer is not fighting the old one trying to stay. The old, the old program has to go. That's it. Amen. And then the new program comes in. Amen? Amen. And this is why the Bible tells us that we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Of our minds. Yeah. Renewing yeah. is a constant, yeah. constant thing. Yeah. You know, a lot of us, a lot of people have been in church a long time and they think they know it. You know, I, I went, went to just go see my mother, I think, last year. I went to go see somebody and I went to, I went to go see my mother and I went to 
to my old church. And, you know, these, these people, and the thing about it is when I went, they didn't recognize me. So, you know, I'm a visitor, and that's all, you know, this and that. And, and then after church, I went and talked to some of the, the deacons. that have been deacons for 50 years. Wow. <laughs> and, and I'm asking them, you know, and I'm just talking to them. And, and I say, yeah, well, I'm in Texas now. And, you know, I have to, the Lord is like, <laughs> using me as a pastor up there. I'm a pastor in Texas. And they're asking me questions. Well, you know, uh, so so is the Lord working? Is he really working in your life? Wow. <laughs> Can't put new words in the old white heads. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's working on you, right? So yeah, he's working on me. About much is he working on you? <laughs> and, it, and, and I didn't get offended, but I was appalled. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna say that word. I was appalled. I was, I was disgusted. I was disgusted. I'm like, you know what? No wonder, it's so wonder nobody comes to this church anymore. Wow, you guys are still doing the same thing that y'all were doing when I was here. And when I was there, and it was 40 some years, four, yeah, 40 some years ago. Mm -hmm. When I was there, I'm like, y'all are still doing the same mess. The pastor passes away, they don't even recognize his wife anymore. Wow. They, she sits in the back of the church. They don't even know who she is. <laughs> it's because of their teaching. It's because of their teaching. They've been teaching their denomination, mm -hmm. right, denominational doctrine, mm -hmm. and not teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Did anybody else miss me? First, you got me? All right. No, I, I didn't see anybody else raising hands. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to move forward. Amen. Amen. So, why is it important to go to church? Why is it important to go to church? You know, God's Word teaches the importance of active participation in a local church. Believers should make church attendance a priority. A priority in their personal lives. Amen. You know, um, in the Bible, uh, you know, you got people who want to be secretive about it. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, what was his name? Was it uh, Nicodemus? Yeah. Was going to Jesus at night. Yeah. 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 Uh, didn't, didn't want his religion. See, and he was a Pharisee. He was a religious leader, but he knew he needed to be taught, and so he was going to Jesus. At night, on the down low, <laughs> so Jesus can teach him some things, you know, because he didn't want his, you know, his religion. He didn't want to mess, mess, you know, mess up his relationship with his religious brothers. That's like now. Remember how many invitations we forget to go out to different places? I want y'all to answer to speak, and as soon as I get out of that religious mode. Nobody want me to come and speak because I'm going to set them free. Uh -huh. And the devil don't want me to set nobody else's congregation free. Wow. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, well, hey, you know what? The same thing happened to Jesus. So yeah, I have no problem with that. Amen. Mm -hmm. But church, it needs to be a, a priority. And people need to learn how to schedule that in their lives. Um, more than they schedule, you know, all these other activities. Right. You know, we got our, and, and I, I see kids today, they're so busy, and I'm not saying our particular children is here in this church, but children are so busy, and the parents are running around all over the place. They're playing every sport, you know, they, they got this going on, got that going on, and nobody can get in church. And, and, and the thing about it is, so now, because the parent doesn't put their foot down and say, hey, look, we need to be in church on these days so we can get our spiritual teaching, mm -hmm. the kid never sees the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And so now, everything in that kid's life is more important than God. That's right. Yep. Because the parent just showed them that God takes second place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the messages that we pass down as parents, we don't even realize the messages that we pass down. And, and, and so I can remember when I was coaching here, I was coaching the Little League football team. And when Wednesdays came, 
we would tell them, hey, Wednesdays, they would need to be out, out of practice at, amen, because we got, we got, we got to be at church. We got, we got to be out of practice. We got to be out of practice. You know, it doesn't matter. I, I used to tell people when I went to a certain, uh, when I got out the military to work at certain jobs, hey, look, I, I'm, on this day, in this day, I got church, and I need my spiritual teaching. I need my you know, people are afraid, and I'm talking about people in the church, are afraid to say to their employers that, hey, I'm a child of the Most High God, mm -hmm. and I need to be in church on Sunday or Wednesday or both. Right? Amen. Because they're afraid they're going to lose the job. If you Listen, if you lose the job, God has a better one for you. Amen. 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 The problem with a lot of us is we're so busy holding on to the little thing, we'll never get the big thing. That's Amen. 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 You, you are hitting the nail right on the head. You know, some people, they're afraid to, as you said, tell their employers, hey, listen, I go to church on Wednesdays and Sundays, so I need this time off. Didn't say you had to take the whole day off. Just listen, I need to go to, come to work on Sunday at 4 in the evening. Okay? Do that. Save your job if, it, if it's that important. God, if you put God first, I guarantee you, they're not going to bother you. But I find it funny that a lot of people will use church as a reason not to go to work, but they don't go to church either. <laughs> it's an excuse not to be somewhere, I, I but you that. still won't go to church. But you use God or the church as an excuse not to be there. We need to, we need to put our priorities our priorities need to be in order. Yes. God first, yes. family, yes. church. Amen. And then everything falls under that. You Amen. know, when you live somewhere, when you move, and this is what people don't know. If you go to the scripture, you, you can really, if you study through the scripture, you'll find this out. When people move from one place to the next, it wasn't because of their job. They went because of their, their worship, their, their church. Mm -hmm. they, they went somewhere because God was telling them to be in a place. Because that if, by them being in that place, it, uh, they were going to get their growth there. That's why we're here. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hey, that's that's why we're here. Because I know, and Lord knows, I wasn't trying to stay in the old house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I had already, we, we already had the buildings for our house down yeah. in Church, Texas. We had it. We, we had our plan together. Yeah. No, this is what God said. I need some warriors right here. Amen. And Amen. you never know. Uh, you know, at that time, we, 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 God is going to keep why He's keeping you there. <laughs> Only thing is, you know, you need to just do it. Amen. 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 Somebody join me. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, that was good. It reminded me of the time um, before we came to Texas, we were stationed in Georgia. And before Georgia, we were in Hawaii and we were attending church, and, and they were villages. But we were faithful in attendance and learning. So then we go to Georgia, and because of things that happened in our church in Hawaii, we're not attending church. And I never forget, it was like just a little bit before two years we'd been there, and we'd gone down to Florida and we were driving back, and it was late night. And um, for my own personal, I was just kind of guessing prayer, and I was like, God, you know. I just feel like we're just not where you would have us to be. And, you know, I'm okay with if, if we have to move or wherever you would have us to be because I just don't think this is it. And I was reflecting on, you know, how we had been living while we were in Georgia. So that was a Sunday night. So Monday, I'm getting ready for work. Preston comes in from PT and he was like, you didn't even believe this. And I said, uh, Maybe. He said, well, the good news or the bad news? I said, uh, well, just both. And he said, I'm on orders. And I said, oh, and you're deploying. Because we've never gone through a deployment right. ever, right? And so he said, yeah. I said, okay, where are we going? And he said, Texas. And I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> so, we came here, and, and before, like, and our move was somewhat crazy, and I remember telling him, okay, so you go ahead, 
the fancy church home because you know we, we, I just want to do things different. Like go and you find us a church home. But they cannot, they gotta be non-denominational and just non-religious. And he said, okay. So gets here and he called me. Like, I think he'd been here maybe a week. And he's like, I think I found us a church home. And I was like, You did? But again, I moved from Georgia was so quick, I said, Okay, God, you found us a church home. So my first question was, are they a denomination? He said, no, they said they're not a denomination. I said, that's what they told you? He said, yeah. I said, oh, okay. So I asked him the name, and he was like, he told me something. But what I heard was Church of God in Christ. And I said, hey, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's coaching. So he said, no, no, they said not a denomination. And I said, I know, I grew up Koji, and I'm pretty sure that that's Koji. He said, no, that's what they told me. So I said, oh, okay. So we get here, and I asked, the first question I asked, I said, y'all say y'all not denomination, but your name say, some, I can't even think of what it was, something Koji, Church of God in Christ. And they said, uh, well, no, 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 we are, we are not denominational, but uh, it was, it was a but. And next thing I know, we're in church seven days a week. Oh, oh. Twice on Sunday. And I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know I've been there. It's me. I've been there. But as I was sitting there, I thought about how when he said, you know, God, people move for church. Like, I literally prayed and was like, God, I just desire for us to be where you would have us to be. And it took me some time before I found my church home. Um, but I... I then became a little more specific. I know I don't want denomination. I know I don't want big church. I don't want this. I don't want that. Hey, God, you know those 8 o'clock services where I can watch football on Sundays? I like them too. Right? Oh, no, I want my kids to learn too. I want, I want to feel loved. I want all these things. And eventually we landed here. Amen. And immediately I knew, I was like, this is what it was all about. And I'm so thankful. Amen. Amen. What a lot of people don't understand is that they're promised. <laughs> sure a lot of people understand that their promised land is right where their church is. Mm -hmm. And when you get in the right church, you you will, you will see yourself running into the right, good, your right promises. That's good. Amen. Amen. You know when they uh, left Egypt and they went into the uh, wilderness, and you think they had all that silver and gold for what? Not to go shopping. <laughs> uh, they went there to set up what? A church. Amen. Amen. And, huh? That's what they did. They went to set up a, a church and they were supposed to set it up in the promised land. That, that building was supposed to be in the promised land and that's where they were supposed to be attending and that's where their blessing was in the promised land. Amen. Your blessing is always going to be where your church is. Amen. 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 You want a good job? Find your good church. Amen. 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 Get in your place. That's Get in good. where you're supposed to be. That's good. And because once, how the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. The church is a part of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And these things, that means everything else. The job, the, the, the vehicle, Come on. the house, uh, the relationships, uh, the everything that you have been desiring in your life, the victories, will it will if they will seek you out. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, we didn't get far at all. Sure we did. We are taking. <laughs> we are taking our time, and we are learning. Amen. Amen. We are learning. Uh, and we're going to keep talking about why it is important to go to church. Amen. Be here next week, same time, same place. We want you to know that we thank you for visiting us here at Christian Freedom Ministries. We love you, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen.